Let's talk electrical safety. For many homeowners and DIY users out there, this might be your first time doing electrical projects. And it's really important to know that electricity is dangerous, but you can safely work around it. So today I'm gonna to go over the steps that I use as an electrician, and it's gonna be a user guide that you can follow to work around electricity in your own home safely when you're doing your own projects. In this example that I'm using, you can see it's just a standard outlet or a receptacle as we call it. And this is gonna be a situation that many of you will have in your own home. You're gonna be coming up and let's say you wanna swap this out. Well, in order to work on it safely, the first step is to turn off the power. But even before you start that, make sure you get a pair of safety glasses and put those on. So after you have your proper eye protection, it's now important to identify the power going to this. Now, most people aren't gonna have this exposed Romex wiring. It's gonna be hidden away in the drywall. So I encourage you to get one of these outlet GFCI testers. They're perfect for if you have GFCIs, but also this, this will help you identify when the power is turned off. So you see, I just plugged it in and the lights lit up. Pull it out, see how they're dark, plug it in, the lights turn on. Another tool you're going to want for any project you do to work safely is you're gonna want a non-contact voltage tester. This specific one is from Fluke, but I also have used Klein tools in the past. A third safety tool you're gonna to want is some sort of metering device. This is a Fluke T6 1000 Pro tester. You don't need to get something quite this fancy. Any multimeter will work. Klein provides a really good model that's much more affordable. Fluke has some higher end ones that I also have. And I'll provide links in the video description for any of the tools I use in this video. Another tool I recommend for DIY users and homeowners is I recommend an insulated screwdriver. This specific one is from Klein. It's really affordable and you can see it has a quick release tool grip. So I can go from my Phillips bit to my flat blade but it has the advantage of being insulated so that way in the event that I do accidentally work on live work or I just can't turn off the power, which I never recommend for homeowners and DIY users, well, this tool is insulated, meaning the electricity will not be conducted at the house voltage through the tool. So the tip will be energized, but nothing else. So after we plug in our outlet tester, and it's lit up, how do we know when it's off? Well, you go over to the panel box, you flip it off, and once you identify the correct circuit, the lights will turn off. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm here at my panel box. You simply open it up, and you can see it's kind of daunting, right? You don't necessarily know if things are labeled correctly. Sometimes they're not labeled at all. In my case, it is fortunately labeled. All you have to do is Flick this from the on position to the off position. Boom, we did that. Now let's go check it out. As you can see, my lights have turned off. Now, if you're doing this alone, I encourage you to turn the power back on just to test that this actually turned off. Or you can test this in something live, like this receptacle over here. We still know it works, right? Or you can turn your breaker back on and test. That way we know this tool has not broken in the process of testing this for power, right? Because if I go on this, think it's dead, but the, really the light's burned out, well, you'll be working on something live and you could possibly electrocute yourself. So that's dangerous. So we'll go ahead, shut off the power and get back to the project. Now the light on our outlet tester is off, we're going to go ahead and we're going to unscrew the faceplate. You might not be working on an outlet, you might be working on a switch, you might be working in a junction box which doesn't have any device on it, so it's going to be user specific. So we're going to remove that faceplate. Now, you can use your non-contact voltage tester in this phase. One way to test it 
is it'll pick up static electricity. If you rub it against your, your shirt, you hear how it beeped. That's one way to test it to make sure the, this tester works. Next, stick it in. The hot side, that's the right side. It's not beeping, not beeping on the side. So let's go ahead and loosen these screws up. At this point, we have loosened up the screws. And what I'm doing is I'm still treating this receptacle like it is hot. There's possibly live wire still in this box because let's say this is hidden behind drywall. Yes, I can see in this situation, we have a wire here and there's a wire here, but you never know when it's hidden in drywall. And there could be three, four, five different circuits in here that are still on even though they don't attach to this device. So pull this out, grabbing the yoke which is grounded and acting like it's still hot. Now you can see in this case, I have wrapped, because I was the one who made this, I have wrapped this outlet, this receptacle in tape. Not every person is going to do that. Not every electrician will do that. Now that's something I recommend you as the DIY user and homeowner, I recommend you do that. And I recommend that to anybody who's an electrician. But if it's not, it's no biggie. Just grab the yoke and watch the cautious of the sides. So we remove that electrical tape. Now we can see there's wires in there. What do I do? I don't know if these are hot. We're pretty sure they're dead, right? We shut off the breaker. We identified that the breaker feeding this was dead using this. However, we don't know if any of these other wires in here are alive. Remember, there could be wires coming from the top, bottom, from the back. We have to use this non-contact voltage tester. Turn it on. Test, it beeps, it's on, we know it works. Stick it in there. Touch all the wires, really get it, hold everything. Okay, it's not beeping. Now test the tool one more time to ensure that this is working properly. Good. Now we know there should be nothing live in here. Now, one final step I always do before I remove any wire nuts and before I actually remove the wires from the device that I'm going to be doing is I use my tester or your multimeter. They have the same function. You're going to go on your tester or your multimeter and you're going to go over to voltage. Now you can see this one has a DC and an AC function. If you have a regular multimeter, you're gonna wanna make sure you are on the AC voltage side. That's the V with the squiggly line over it. So you remove the leads, and I like to go from my white, which is my neutral, and I go to my ground. Let me turn the light on. You can see zero volts. Next, I like to go from my hot, which is going to be my black, to my ground. I have zero volts. And lastly, I like to go from my hot to my neutral, zero volts. We know there's no voltage present. We know we can safely work on this. Now, I can visually confirm what I have touched with my voltage tester, and I know that I can safely work on this circuit, on this device right here, because I have, one, I've shut off the power at the panel, and I have confirmed with first my outlet tester. You might not be able to if you have a switch. Then I have used my non-contact voltage tester. And then lastly, I have triple confirmed that there's no voltage present, nothing's being backfed, and I am safe, there's no ground faults that I'm unaware of because I have used this voltage tester. Now, you probably have some questions as to what are these if you've never seen these before. These are called Wago wire nuts. These are gonna be included in this safety video because I think they provide the safest screw up free option for DIY and homeowners. They are cost effective. They come in five, two, and three wire options. They're good for stranded, they're good for solid. 
Um, they come in this little package. I'll provide a link in the description. I like them. They're super fast. You know, all they have is a little lever. Open it up. You have your stripped wire, press it in and close it. Screw up free. I've gone into many situations with a traditional twist on wire nuts and they are just loose. The loose connections, you know, you'll have exposed conductor. So for homeowners and DIY first time users, I highly recommend going with the Wago. It's going to provide a solid, reliable connection and it's pretty much idiot proof. It's really easy to use. And then lastly, I also recommend you get some Super 88 Scotch 3M electrical tape, which I'll also link in the description. I can't emphasize enough how much cheap versus higher quality electrical tape makes a difference. This stuff is not expensive. Yes, it costs more of a premium cost than the cheap Harbor Freight or whatever brand electrical tape, but this stuff is really top notch. So when you are finished with your electrical projects, I always highly recommend that you wrap your projects up with 3M electrical tape, especially if you're working in a metal box, right? I can accidentally have one of these screws touch the side of the metal box. It could create a spark or it could become energized and that's a dangerous situation. So I highly recommend cover up those screw terminals just like this. It's rated, it's safe, it's good for high and low temperatures. So just like that, you have a safe to work with option. So that way when you pull it out, just like I did before, you don't accidentally slip. Let's say this is hot, even though we did the other test, this is accidentally hot, you're not gonna slip, touch a screw and get electrocuted. That's gonna conclude today's video. I hope this helped you learn something and make you feel more comfortable working on electricity in your own home and in DIY projects. It's important to ensure the power is off always before you work on any source of electricity. I'm going to include links to any tools I recommend for your safety and as well as those Wago wire nuts in that 3M Super 88 tape. Stay tuned for more videos like this. I'm going to have a whole series on how to do outlets, how to do GFCIs, switches, lights. So if you like this type of content, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.